Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, Tony Lima, Ken Venturi, Gary Player, Bruce Devlin, Neil Cole, Peter Butler. From its very beginnings back in 1964, the Volvo World Match Play attracted the biggest names in golf. With the 50th anniversary approaching in October, we're looking back through its history. Today, the first tournament director, George Hammond, shares his memories. When the company decided to uh, put on the, the World Match Play, um, I was dragged out of my particular job at the time and told to get on with it. We're going to do a golf tournament, Hammond, they were told me, so make it work. And I had no idea what to do, of course, I was not involved in golf promotions in those days. To find a golf course was quite difficult because we, we thought that the tournament itself was going to be quite a big event. And I remembered going around uh, <coughs> Wentworth in uh, the early days watching the Canada Cup. And I remember then that the course itself could hold that sort of event. So I approached Wentworth and uh, they were delighted to have it. Um, and uh, that was the very first of the Piccadilly World Match plays in 1964. It was so big that in the early days, um, the road outside of Wentworth was the main road leading down to the West Country. There wasn't the M4 as it is now, of course. And all the major traffic went down that way. And then all the people, all the spectators wanted to get into the golf course. And the road was jammed between Wentworth and, and Egham, totally jammed. We had nearly 20,000 people came, which was unheard of. The only other tournament which would get anything close to that was the Open. And um, from then on, it just became a, a huge, a huge event. I mean, it really was a big, big event. It was second only to the Open in terms of golf sponsorship. And uh, it made headlines around the world. It was that popular. And the reason it was popular, because of its match play. Everybody realized it was fairly formal. We gave the players the uh, blazers with a special badge. Um, and uh, we, um, we tried to make it as formal, formally informal, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, it worked. And the limousines were a big, big success. Yes, they were. George was the mastermind behind many innovations the World Match Play brought to golf. Hospitality such as this had never been put on in Europe before, and upmarket hotels, player limousines and evening entertainment made him a firm favourite with the players. When he retired, he stayed involved as the tournament's official starter, the source of plenty of stories over the years. One occasion being a starter was against me, really, I suppose. Uh, Ernie Els was playing Vijay Singh, and uh, the, in those days it became a nuisance with uh, uh, phones ringing, not cameras, but phones. And um, it was the start of the mobile phone sort of thing, really. Um, and Ernie said to me, George, he said, would you possibly make an announcement to say about the mobile phones? I said, certainly. So I made this announcement, please will, you know, the usual thing, not use mobile phones, blah, blah, blah. I didn't realize at the time I made the announcement that I was on television. And a good friend of mine thought, right. So he phoned my mobile phone, which I thought I had switched off. <laughs> it was ringing in my pocket. I'm now thinking, who the devil's got this mobile phone on? And it was mine. Sevi, on many occasions, Sevi, who was, he, you know, he was extraordinary. On one occasion, he hit the ball, violently left, over the old pro shop as it was, uh, never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. I mean, it, even the worst handicapped golfer at Wentworth wouldn't have hit it where he hit it. Um, he then uh, takes another ball off the tee. I, I can't remember what the outcome of the hole was, but uh, you know, he didn't see it. Shrugged his shoulders, said, Ooh, bad shot, and that's it. And he just got on with it. 
To create a tournament from thin air is one thing, but to bring in the crowds, attract the very best players and treat them like kings makes George an important figure in the history of European golf. In 1964, golf was becoming a massive sport in the USA, with multiple major winners delighting bigger and bigger audiences. To bring them together just outside London in a brand new format was a major coup. We had Arlo Palmer playing, uh, who was then the number one golfer in the world, and we had um, Jack Nicklaus, of course, who was uh, a very, in those days, the up-and-coming young golfer of the day, and Gary Player, who was well known as well. And that, making it match play, um, became the excitement for the spectators and the general golfing public. It was, it was huge.